Okay, so we are back. Uh, we actually do have a new party this time. The uh, reason why is my recorder messed up again, and so I had to start with a new party. However, all the uh, quests that they have on this game are the same. The only thing that there are like sporadic events that are different sometimes apparently. The only thing that was different was we found a beehive, got stung by the beehive, but we got some food. And then these three guys that look like triplets decided for us to bet them on trying to figure out which one was the one that we talked to and then they talked to first and then they moved around and then at the end we were supposed to figure out which one was where. Anyway, we won the bet. So here we are uh, at the Kansas River like we were at the end of the last game. Greetings, immigrants. Welcome to the Kansas River. How you choose to cross is the first t real test of the tribe. No, don't even think about fording in a river deeper than the wagon bed, about two and a half feet. You'll swamp your wagon and lose your supplies. You can cock the wagon bed and float it or be smart and hire me to take your wagon on my face. Why not have a look around before you decide? You can talk to me anytime you want to hear about the crossing options again. Hi, my name is Albert. My family and I are excited about the prospect of journeying to Oregon. We sold all our possessions to stock our wagon, but it will be worth it. It is said that Oregon is a land of abundance. But first, we have to agree on how best to cross the Kansas River. Crowds of people line the river waiting for the ferry or preparing to brave the river crossing themselves. We can't afford to take a ferry. We're making our wagon into a boat. We'll turn it over, cock the bottom and sides with pitch, and use it to float our goods across. Have to swim the animals, hope it doesn't rain. The river's high enough. With the crowds of people waiting to get on the ferry, we could be stranded here for days. Hope there's enough to graze on for all those animals. Not many people carry feed. I'd rather wait, though, than cross in a rickety wagon boat. How might I help you? What would you like to ask Joseph Papai? Immigrants cross the many rivers between here and Oregon a number of ways. By ferry is the safest, but depending on the river, some will choose to ford or cock the wagon. To ford a river means to pull your wagon across a shallow part of the river with the wheels still attached. It's only practical when the water level is below the height of the wagon. To cock the wagon means to seal it so that no water can get in. The wagon can then be floated across like a boat. It's the only way to do it if the water is high. Though it can still have its ribs, best make sure the wagon bed is fully repaired and sealed tight. But my recommendation, use the ferry if one is available. They'll put your wagon on top of a flat boat. The owner of the ferry will take your wagon across the river for a charge, of course. Okay, so uh, I forgot to read it, but y'all probably read what that was. We decided to get some pelts from someone, and the purpose of that is... Oh, yeah. Okay, so the purpose of that is whenever we cock our wagon, we can use the pelts to uh, better float the wagon. That'll be later, because we're going to ferry across.
and we should also rest because we've got a broken leg here and there's a few people that are kind of tired so I'm going to do that. How long do, does she have her broken leg for? 17 days. I don't have any medicine either. We're gonna have it. Oh darn, we didn't get it. I'd love to help y'all out, but I have a business to run. Have you seen how many wagons are lining up? Even at these prices, he refuses to reduce the price. Party of lights from the ferry after a pleasant ride across the river. Tripping over a small bump in the rough ground, Elijah finds himself in the dust. A little sore, he picks himself up and keeps walking. Several travelers mill about, unpacking their belongings and excitedly whispering around campfires. This seems to be a popular camping ground with many travelers eager to share stories of fearsome critters. Set up camp. We're going to share stories so that we can get more... The party could listen to a new story or share one they've heard before in exchange for fresh supplies. I've never had this option before, uh, to listen to a story or share. Very few, usually you, you share stories amongst the party and then they, they get their skill sets increased. Very few people outside of Pennsylvania have heard of the squonk, although it's very common in the hemlock forest there. The squonk is nocturnal, traveling about in the evening and at night. It prefers the dark because it can't bear to be seen. It has ill-fitting skin, is covered in gruesome warts, and is always unhappy, but my judgment is probably the saddest of all creatures that walk the earth. As it walks, it weeps and leaves behind a trail of its tears. It's by following this trail that the squonk can be located. Capturing the squonk is another matter, however. I knew a man who once tried. 
He set a, tab a cupboard trap for the squonk and caught it in a sack. Unfortunately, when, when he got back to camp, he discovered that the pitiful thing had dissolved into tears. As the party listens to the storyteller's exciting tall tale, they share in a hearty meal. Am I dreaming? I must be imagining things. What does it say about the squonk? Okay, under fearsome, okay. The first written rec record of the squonk comes from the book Fearsome Creatures of the Lumber Woods by William T. Cox, published in 1910. So this was after the events of Oregon Trail. But anyway, it was described as being unique to the hemlock forest of Pennsylvania. The squonk has been referenced in at least two popular songs of the 1970s. I might want to look that up at one point. I'm curious about that, actually. The group notices the flower supply is getting low. We should bake some hard track. The party groans at the suggestion. Hard track will stretch the supplies for far longer, but it tastes miserable. I'm going to make all of it into hard track so that we have more food. of a fast flowing river can be heard again long before it comes into view this is the big blue river an infamously difficult problem okay i'm gonna go ahead and save my recording